Welcome to the matrix costing demo as part of cost insight technology showcase. I want to start off this demo by posing a couple what if questions. Imagine what if sourcing teams could quickly generate manufacturing simulations with varied production inputs. What if alternative regions could be quickly and easily compared to determine the most cost effective option for sourcing or resourcing a part? What if quoting teams could efficiently respond to complicated RFQs that are requesting various volumes for various parts? And what if manufacturing teams could make informed decisions on the best location to manufacture a given part? All of these scenarios are possible with a priori's new matrix costing capability. At its core, matrix costing allows you to quickly and easily vary the location, annual volume and batch size of your manufacturing simulations in a priori. For the demonstration we're going to go through today, we're going to take the perspective of a sourcing professional looking to source a part. And through matrix costing, we're going to look at varying a variety of inputs. So we're going to look at two different regions, China and Brazil, two different annual volumes, 500 parts and 2,500 parts, as well as two different ways of splitting up the batches annually and quarterly. So if you take all of these different inputs and get all of the different combinations of these, you end up with a matrix of possibilities that you would want to simulate in a priori. For example, you could want to run a simulation here in Brazil with an annual volume of 500 and a batch size of 500, so annually. You would also want to run a simulation in Brazil with an annual volume of 500 and a batch size of 125 quarterly, and so on and so forth. So at this point, we can hop into a priori and start to look at what this workflow would look like. But before I show you how this works with matrix costing, I want to take a second to show what this workflow looked like in a priori before matrix costing. So what we have here is a sheet metal part that I have what I'd call completely costed. And what that means is I've gone in, I've costed the part, and I've made a number of overrides, changed the material, made sure the process is correct, added a surface treatment, et cetera, et cetera. And so that I feel at the moment that this simulation accurately represents the manufacturing for this part. At this point, prior to matrix costing, before we had that capability, I would have to go in and start making new scenarios. So I'd come up here, scenario, save as, we'd create a new scenario called China 500, say annually. Go ahead and save this. A priori goes in, saves the new scenario, and then we would change the production inputs. Go to China. 500 parts and run it in a single batch and go ahead and cost. A priori goes ahead, cost the part, and then we repeat that for the other seven simulations, making a new scenario for each one, changing the inputs, and then running those scenarios. Whereas for this particular part, you've got one part, eight different combinations. This workflow isn't particularly challenging or time intensive, but let's extend this for a second. Let's say that you have four different regions and three different volumes and three different ways you want to split up your batches or even further let's say you have a roll-up or an assembly that you're trying to run through this workflow you could see how very very quickly this particular workflow could become labor intensive and time consuming and even potentially error prone trying to get all the different simulations together and, and run them all in a organized logical manner this is where matrix costing really shines. And I wanna go back to the initial part and show you how you would go through this process with matrix costing. So we start from our initial part, go up to cost and then click on matrix costing. And it's worth noting that while I'm launching this workflow from an individual part, you could also launch this workflow from an assembly or a rollup and matrix costing would work just as effectively. First, we set the matrix set name. So here we're going to say cost insight underscore demo. And then we start to put our production inputs. So here we're going to pick Brazil and China, pick annual volumes of 2,500 and 2,500, and then pick batch per year. You can pick either batch size per year, but in this case, we're going to pick one and four to show annually one batch per year and quarterly four batches per year. At this point, we go ahead and click add and a priori automatically generates the matrix of combinations that these inputs drive. 
At this point, if we wanted to, we could actually add additional simulations to run. So let's say we wanted to run Eastern Europe. We can go ahead and add that in additionally on top of that initial add. However, since that's not part of the simulation we're running today in the demonstration, I'll go ahead and remove those. It's also worth noting that matrix costing has the potential to generate a lot of scenarios in the database. So there is functionality built in to remove those scenarios if you pick the same name as a previous matrix costing run that you've done. So now that we're happy with our inputs, we go ahead and click OK. An operator or will continue and pull up the bulk cost window. And the bulk cost window here gives us an opportunity to modify parameters for individual simulations before we go ahead and actually have a priori run the simulations. Since we're happy with these inputs at this point, we're good to go and we could go ahead and click cost and run the simulations. I won't do that right now in the interest of time. And I've already gone ahead before the demonstration, run these parts and have the results. So post matrix costing, a priori creates a rollup, runs the parts and puts all of those simulations into this rollup. So then you can start to conduct your data analysis. There's a lot of different ways you could conduct at your data analysis from this point, but I'm just going to talk about a couple that pop right out. To start off, you could look at your results right in the rollup view. So here we can sort by, say, fully burned cost and very quickly understand which simulations that were run are the lowest fully burned cost and start to look at why that's going on. If we want to dive into the details even further, we could create a comparison. So I've made a comparison here of all of the China scenarios. So at this point, we can get into the details. So for the China simulations, which simulation is the lowest fully burden cost and why is that the case? What parameters are set here which are driving that lowest fully burden cost and how what might we be able to act on that information? Other ways that you could go about looking at this information include running a spreadsheet report and reviewing the results that way, as well as pushing the data to cost insight and being able to dive into the details within cost insight reporting. At this point, I want to switch back to where we started and take a look at this matrix that we originally created. Whereas prior to matrix costing, this particular matrix would have taken some time to pull together the scenarios, run them, and then compare the data. With matrix costing, with the new a priori functionality, we can quickly and easily generate this matrix of possibilities and get to the information we need faster in order to make an informed decision. So to go back to those what if questions that I posed at the beginning of the demonstration, what if sourcing teams can quickly generate manufacturing simulations by easily varying the production inputs for the parts, the rollups, or the assemblies they're trying to analyze? What if alternative regions can be easily compared to determine the most cost effective option if you're sourcing a new part or trying to find alternative suppliers for a part you've already sourced? What if quoting teams can efficiently respond to those RFQs where the customer is looking for various volumes and batch sizes for the parts they've requested? And what if manufacturing teams can make quick informed decisions on the best place and the least expensive component? Imagine the possibilities matrix costing opens up by limiting the time it takes to get from needing information to having that information and making an informed decision. So that concludes our demonstration. At this point, Craig, if any there are any questions, I'd be happy to go through them. Hi, Matt. Yes, there were some questions deposited in the chat. Uh, I can go through them now. Um, the first question is, uh, is this only available in 20.1? So great question. Matrix costing has been introduced as of 20.1. It's new functionality as of that version. So from 20.1 and forward, so any version after that, you will have access to matrix costing. Awesome. Um, the next question was, does this functionality require a license? So another great question. Matrix costing actually runs off of the deep costing mechanism. So there is no additional license or cost required to get to matrix costing. Anyone with 20.1 a priori or later will be able to matrix cost parts. Oh, that's great. Um, we have two more questions. The first is, uh, is there a, an ability to create your own scenario name? So when you get to that second window, the costing window, before you actually click cost, you have the ability to override the various 
parameters for the simulations before you go ahead and to at that point, you could actually go ahead and put in your own scenario names and have those come out um, as expected in the roll up after matrix costing. OK, yeah, that's great. That seems like a, a, a great ability right there. And then the last question is, uh, if you're costing and assembly, do the assemblies values uh, show up for the child parts or sub assemblies as well? So one of the real strengths of excuse me, matrix costing is that when you set up matrix costing for an assembly, the top level parameters, the volume and batch size and things like that, get pushed down to the child sub assemblies and parts as well. So all of those parameters you're setting up for matrix costing are respected in the hierarchy of the assembly, and it really takes out a lot of um, a lot of the initial effort that was there when you were trying to conduct this workflow prior to matrix costing. Oh, that's great. That seems like a huge time saver. Um, that was our last question, Matt, and uh, I believe that uh, do you have anything additional? I, I think that's all. Thank you for coming and absolutely. You've, my email is here. Please feel free to reach out if you would like more information. Thank you.